Hey guys, Stealth here. In this guide we're going to look at some keys, and by that I mean the keys, the hotkeys that you can use in Wargame Red Dragon to make your gameplay just a little bit more smooth, a little bit faster. They can really make the difference between getting your units in or out of combat in time, between giving the right order and the wrong order, and uh, there's just all sorts of hotkeys in here that you can use to just improve your game overall. I just had a look and there were even some that I hadn't thought of yet. Now we're going to adjust the system a little bit. So follow along with me, go into the options and then go into controls. Now camera controls are not that interesting. WASD, I use these all the time and probably you do too. If you don't have the mouse scroll enabled, you're going to have to make sure that you move the, the camera around using these. Deployment is the graph key, also known as the key next to the one on your keyboard. Um, it is not really that useful because it is almost always open in my case and um, the movement to it is so automatic that I don't really need to have a hotkey for it. The I key unit information is something that I use all the time. I want to have an eye on what is the armor value of this tank. How far can this HGM go? Um, what is the turn radius of this plane in rare situations? Having this key under I will make sure that you can very very quickly see what exactly you're up against. Of course it will not tell you the veterancy of the unit. That is shown in the unit card itself. Or sorry, it's not shown on the unit card but it's shown a little bit more to the south if you can select the unit that is. H is an important one. You want to be able to quickly turn weapons on or off. Um, the main reason for this, I use it anyway, is for turning off weapons on reconnaissance units, like for example Marine Jaeger, Spetsnaz VMF, um, Fern Spayers, guys like that who you do not want to have fire at the enemy, because they're going to give their position away. Alternatively, you can also use it to make sure that your AA is safe when these radars are turned off in case you see a seed plan coming. Quick tip that I usually give here. If you have a lot of radar guided AA in one area of operations, have them all under one hotkey. So have them all selected, then press for example control and zero to make sure that they are bound to group zero. And with that, once you see an enemy seat plane come in, you hit zero and then you hit F to turn all the weapons off. Your entire air defense will go down, but the moment that that seat plane has evac'd or turned around so it's no longer facing your AA, you press zero again, you press H again, and all of your weapons will open up at the same time, provided they're in range, of course. So this is some way that I use the H key. Stopping a unit is also important to have. Um, it's bound to E and making sure you know this will allow you to very quickly stop your units. Say that you're walking into an ambush, say that you're engaged by a bombing run, you want your units to either stop or spread out and going with your cursor towards that stop button, which is usually over there, is not exactly the best use of your time. So pressing E in this situation is going to help. C will split up your units. If you have, for example, a group of two to four tanks, you want to split those up to make sure that you have four separate units or two separate units, depending on how large your group was. Pressing C will split them up. Um, you could remember this as the C of the word cut. I want to cut up this group into separate units. With that, um, you can also then regroup them later on using R. That's another hotkey. I rarely, if ever, use it. Um, I might start using it now, but I don't think that it is that mission critical to know that one. Stopping, though, is a very important one. If you see a bombing run coming for your units, you can spread out. Um, that's the X key. And with the X key, you make sure that your units are less of a tight-knit group. So they're less of an interesting target for artillery or a bombing run. Again, if you already see a bombing run coming at you, you could, for example, press first E to make sure that they stop. You could then press X to make sure that your units spread out so that they are not going to get bombed all at the same time. Keep in mind, it will take some time before those units um, turn around and each face a different direction and start moving that direction. So don't think that uh, pressing E and X is going to get you uh, an instant unit dispersion. It takes a while. Firing in a position is very, very important. 
With this hotkey, you can make sure that you can direct artillery, but you can also direct other units. Normally, you press right mouse button if you want to have someone attack another unit. If you don't have eyes on the target, for example you're bombarding a town first with artillery, or let's say that you're using a napalm tank or um, 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 a combat engineer's vehicle, a CEV, in that situation you want to have them manually fire at a location. You press T, then you left click where you want them to fire, not right click, left click. Right click will start to move the unit there. So you press T, you left click at the target, and even if you don't have eyes on the target, your units will still fire. Very, very important key. Moving fast is usually bound to the semicolon, so point comma. Um, what I did is relocate it to the F key, so that I can just select my entire group, uh, hit the F button, and I'll have to travel all the way with my mouse cursor down to there, move fast. Instead, I select my units, press F, and then move them to a destination. It's going to save you a split second, but it's going to save you a split second every time you do it. So the more that you start using this one, the more time you have to actually manage your forces. Attack is something that um, I never use. I mean, I don't use the hotkey, that is. Because pressing right mouse button when you have a unit selected and targeting an enemy unit that way, I believe, is still the best way to do it. Um, alternatively, you can have your unit selected, you press Q, and then you left click the target and they'll start to fire. Unload speaks for itself. It's you and you want to offload your troops quickly. With that, you're making sure that, for example, a chopper offloads its forces um, and then can get the hell out of there. It's also a nice and quick key if you have, for example, a quick helicopter group to deploy in the beginning of the battle. Have those things under a hotkey. Um, for example, you have a couple of VDVs in MI8s. You spot a couple of Celtics. You quickly hit your control, or sorry, you quickly hit your one key, which is the key that you used to bound all of your helicopters to. So selecting all of the helicopters, pressing control one and then making sure that you have those under a group. Anyway, you see the Celtics come in, you press 1 and you press U, and then immediately the VDVs get offloaded before the MI8s get shot down. That is some way that you can use this one. Next up is switch altitude. Several helicopters, um, if not all of them, will first come in at their normal cruise altitude, which they can also fire at, of course, and then they're going to start to hover about 5 meters above the ground. That makes them pretty ineffective, because especially reconnaissance cannot spot anything, ATGMs cannot fire, or at least not accurately, especially if you're using tree lines. And other units, like uh, helicopters with rocket pods, are possibly not capable of firing their weapons. What you need to do there is click on the unit, hit Z or Z, and then the helicopter is going to go back to its normal altitude. Keep in mind that you only need to do this with select units. If, for example, you're uh, behind a tree line with your helicopters intentionally, you don't want to press Z. You don't want to have those helicopters go up. If you are, for example, using a reconnaissance, you want it to go up, because hovering very low above the ground is not going to have it spot anything. Regrouping is set to R, and with this you can quickly regroup your forces. Um, as I mentioned, it's not something that I do very often. Landing something is something that I use from time to time, um, not that often. The key is by default bound to the K key, I believe. And with that, you can quickly land your forces. So make sure that this is landing, this is unloading. There is a difference. This will put the helicopter on the ground. This will have it hover the helicopter and then you can pull it out quickly. If you land it, it's going to have to go through its entire takeoff animation again, so it's going to have to spin up the rotors and then fly away, which is going to take several valuable seconds. Another important marker or important key is smoke at position. With this key, you can make sure that you deploy a smoke screen without having to um, select your mortars, then go to click or a smoke area and left click on a target. I usually have my artillery under a hotkey. My hotkey for artillery is either uh, control 7, 8 or 9. 
I use that to make sure that I have the first six groups open for other units. For example, expensive tanks that I want to micromanage, helicopter attack groups, um, quick response forces, and infantry. So six, seven, and sorry, seven, eight, and nine are nicely out of the way. If I then see a location that I want to mortar with a smoke screen, I press seven, I press B, I left click on the map, and you're done. It's going to save you a lot of time because otherwise you'd have to go towards your artillery if you don't have it hotkeyed, select it, go back to the area where you want to have a smoke screen, click smoke and then click on the map. I know we're only talking seconds here but those seconds will either win or lose you the battle because this is a strategy game but it you could say it's more of an attention management game because where is your attention gonna go? The more your attention can be actually on the battlefield without having to micromanage your forces, the better it is. So even seconds like these will help you improve your gameplay. Another very important key, reverse. If you left click a tank and you right click somewhere on the map, it's gonna go there in full forward motion. If that tank is engaged with enemy forces, you do not want to have it go forwards back to your own lines because it's exposing the rear of the tank. If you press G and then left click anywhere on your own, um, say, defensive lines, the tank will start to reverse towards your lines. So it's going to keep its strongest armor towards the enemy. I use this all the time to make sure that when I'm facing HGM fire or tank fire, those things still hit the front of the tank, the strongest part, instead of hitting the weaker back end of the tank. You don't want to do that. So you could uh, put this thing to a different key. Um, I'm already so extremely used to this one that I don't really need another key. Um, if you wanted to and you're not using the regroup, you could press R uh, or you could uh, hotkey this thing to R to make sure that R sets stands for reverse. As I said, I'm using G, so I'm not going to change it myself. But if you feel like that's useful for you, go ahead and change it. V for evacuating. Make sure that if you have a plane selected and you suddenly change your mind that the mission has suddenly gotten too hot, you press V and the plane will evacuate. Very, very important to know this one, especially if you're doing a bombing run with, say, more than one plane. You can just select a box around the planes and press V instead of having to try and catch the planes one by one. So this is something that you must know if you want to be good at Wargame. Total unit viewer, um, I believe this is normally set to another key, but I put it to the semicolon because I wasn't using it. Toggle airport menu is not usually set to F12, it's usually set to F1, and it is either going to open up or close that window of your nine airplanes available on the bottom left corner of the screen. I used it to, uh, I switched it to F12 because I always have that window open anyway, and it allowed me to, um, have these four flare markers on the F1 through F4 key. I went with the F1 key for help because um, as a computer user the first thing I think of when you say F1 is the help function. So with that I can quickly uh, press F1, click anywhere on the map where I need help and hopefully my teammates are going to spot it and send some reinforcements. Similarly I got F2 for attack marker, F3 for defend, and F4 for a custom message. For example, you press F4, you type AA, you uh, press enter, and you left click anywhere on the map to net let the uh, friendlies know that there is the AA. And finally, change focus, which is the tab key. It's going to have you change focus from one unit to another. Um, I never use this one, so don't be too bothered with that. And then there's one key that um, is not listed it is shift. The shift key will allow you to queue orders. And with queuing orders you can make sure that your forces, for example a reconnaissance helicopter, is going to patrol over the front line. It's not a patrol where it's going to fly from, two point, from one point to the next continuously unless you give it orders. It's not a patrol command. It's just queuing orders. So giving an order, execute it, then execute the next and the next and the next without your intervention. So what you do in this situation is, for example, you have a uh, logistics chopper which is empty. You click the chopper, you right click the fob, your own fob preferably, unless you want to start stealing from your teammates. 
um, holding shift, you then left, uh, sorry, you then right click where you want the chopper to go. And that will allow your chopper to fly back to base, come back, rearmed and resupplied, and then start resupplying your forces back again. You can also do this with other units, but I found that I usually use it with reconnaissance units, which I have patrolling. Um, I use it with logistics choppers and other units. Now, if this is a bit dry for you, if you can't exactly um, figure out how these things are used in battle, I'm going to do a gameplay video, or at least a video where um, I can show you exactly how this works. So stay tuned, it's coming right up. Alright, let's have a look. I have a couple of different units here for my Scandinavian general deck and with these I'm going to show you what exactly you can do with the keys. First off, I'm going to have to use these tanks and quickly capture a position. So I have them selected, dragged a box around them, press F and click them towards Foxtrot. This is not per se the best sector for them, but it saves me from clicking the unit then going to move fast and then clicking on the map again. It's the distance that you don't have to travel. So I click the tank, F, click. It's a lot faster. That's one key. Next up, I have a reconnaissance helicopter over here. Now right now, you cannot use the change altitude and that's because this chopper is above several trees. That will never allow it to go down towards its standard level. Say, you, you could suppose you could call that the idle level. Right now, you can see that it is going down and this key is now active, change altitude. It's now dropping down, and with that, it can no longer spot over this tree line, which is exactly what the purpose of this helicopter is. It can also no longer see what's happening behind it, unless it's going to get shot down by infantry that's coming out of these trees. So I press Z, you can see that the button lit up for a while, and then it's going to change altitude, get back up there again. So that is the change altitude key. Next up, I want to deploy my um, Kusjäger 90 into these buildings. I'm going to use this using queuing orders, because in the early battle stages you want to have orders set up so you don't have to micromanage everyone themselves. I start off by holding shift. Right click on these buildings, sets the helicopters in motion. I'm still holding shift. Now, as I'm holding shift, I press U for unload. So when they get there, they will offload. Then I want the helicopters to get out of there in case they're going to get shot down. So still holding shift, I'm going to right click the forest again to have them come back to where they were. Now I'm not doing anything, I'm just going to show you what happens. The helicopters are pushing up. I have to go through their animation of course. Dropping down. You don't have to use the change altitude in this situation, by the way. It's just an automatic thing that they do, offloading. Deployed. Kusjäger automa automatically go into the buildings. They take off again, and they're flying away. So that is using both the U key and the Shift key for queuing orders. Now, let's say that my tank over here is in trouble. It is getting shot at. First, I want to return fire, but I don't exactly know where they are. I know that there's infantry somewhere in these tree lines with an ATGM launcher. In this situation, I first want to get a shot off, but without eyes on, I cannot right click. If I right click here, it's going to start moving the tank forward, and I don't want that. So what I instead need to do, I pressed E here to stop the tank. I press T, have them fire a shot there. Say I want to fire another shot there, so I'm pressing T again, firing again. And now I want to reverse this tank out away from trouble. And I'm pressing G, you can see that the reverse air shoe comes up, the reverse order. I left click where I wanted to reverse, and the tank is now reversing to get away. This is allowing its frontal armor of 19 to stay directed towards the enemy, if there was any over here. If I were to expose the rear, this tank could be one shot because the AP power is going to be a lot higher than the armor and the armor is not going to stand up to the shell so that will cost me a 160 point tank. Now you can also do several of these actions combined. So what I'm going to do now is hold shift I want the tank to go here first, fire off a couple of rounds and then go back. So shift, 
go there, holding shift, press T, fire a shell there, fire a shell there, fire around there, and another one over there. Then, back up. So all this time I was holding shift. Tank is now into position. It fires once, acquires a new target, reloads, fires again, gets ready to reload, fires again, fires its last shot, and it's reversing away from trouble. This is especially handy if you have a high value point tank, like the one that I have over here. And you have a couple of enemy targets. Say you got a couple of cheap T-55s. What you want to do is kill those tanks, but not stay out here for too long. So what I want to do is uh, hold shift, right click the tanks, then press G to reverse and, press and put it back to its own position. With that, you got to make sure that your tank is not in trouble for too long. Now let's say that I have a plane that I want to evac. First I got to offload my infantry. I got an F-16 Block 5 and I want to send that to do a bombing run on this tree line. Now I didn't say it because it's automatic for me, that's somewhat tricky. I clicked the uh, plane, pressed T automatically for targeting there. And now my plane is in trouble so I press V and evac it. It did not drop the bombs but if there was a bug hiding there it could still shoot the plane down. If I saw that in time, or if I saw some other plane get shot down, I can still save my own plane that way. And it is only going to have to go through the refueling process and probably not the rearming one, depending on whether you used it or not. Next up, Amos. This is my mortar carrier. Or my mortar, I suppose you should say. First, I want to get a couple of rounds on target. So I'm pressing T and left clicking on this block of buildings. They're now starting to acquire the target, aiming in, and firing. After that, I want them to move to a different location. So I'm holding shift and right clicking there to make sure that once they fired their salvo, they're not going to be targeted again. This allows me to, in the meanwhile, micromanage this tank so that it can help these forces, for example. The Amos have fired, and after they fired, they're backing away. This will allow them not to get counter artillery. So for example, if the enemy saw that there were a couple of shells coming from this position, they might return fire. Having them reverse automatically using queuing orders, so holding shift, will allow your mortars or any other artillery to survive. So this is a very, very important key. Now I want to have this tank slowly approach this block of buildings. But I know that there is something in here that might be in trouble, or that might be trouble for my tank. So using Control 7, I hotkeyed these AMOS mortars. Now I want to um, put smoke on here, so I'm pressing the B key. And since I have a line of sight, I'm going for a corrected shot. Then, after these things fired, I want to reverse. So Shift and Reverse. And you can see that they're putting down a smoke screen, which should allow my tank, or let's say this is an infantry carrier, to push up again. This is how you can use several units in tandem very, very quickly. Now I'm going to do it using only hotkeys. I want this tank to make it to, for example, uh, this tree line. I know that there is enemy ATGMs possibly coming from that direction. So what I'm going to do is hotkeying this tank. Control 1. This is my most important unit at this time. Then, I'm not sending the order out yet, because it has to cross the open field. Smoke has to be put down first. So I press 7, selecting the mortars. Press B. Hold Shift, because that single smoke is not going to cover it. Press B again. Smoke it again. Hold Shift and right click there, so that they get out of the way once they are done with their salvos. Then I'm going to tell this tank to move here. Um, so I'm going to tell it to move here, to fire off a shot. It cannot see that target from there, so it's going to say no line of fire, but once it gets there, where it's supposed to fire, it can. Telling it to move again, fire on that bush, and telling it to move there, and finally fire another shell on that bush. I did not use my mouse cursor this entire time, except to illustrate what I'm doing. 
The tank reached its first firing position, but due to the smoke it couldn't see anything. So a unit will always check, can I execute this order? If not, it will not do it. It reached the second position. It's aiming the gun, firing off a shell and the uh, machine gun because it's in range. And I think that something went wrong with the queuing orders because it does not stop firing. Ah, there you go. It had to fire a full salvo of 100 rounds with the machine gun. It's moving forward. I'm still not touching the keyboard. I'm only moving the, the camera around with the keyboard. Turning the gun again. Firing. Now you can see that it takes a lot less time to get this unit moving again. Because it only had to fire. And now I can finally move it into location here. So that is those several hotkeys. Now let's say that I want my enemies, to, or I'm uh, in trouble here with my strv 103 ds and I want to have some help. All I gotta do, press F1, put down a marker. Help. I need these guys covered. I select my units, press G, or uh, hit the G key and left click there. I can also say, you know, there is AA in here. I press F4, type AA, hit enter and I usually use my enter on my numpad because it's a lot closer to my mouse so I don't have to get my hand off of my mouse too for too long press beacon place it there if there is an enemy push coming through this line I want to defend it F3 clicking a defense marker finally I want to have an attack go on in this location I press F2 and set down an attack marker now again, those markers or those hotkeys are not set to those keys by default. So you gotta go into the control menu and change them to what I prescribed in this video earlier. I know it's a bit of a hassle if you haven't done it already, but I will guarantee you it'll help you. It's going to make sure that your units and uh, your orders are going to go a lot faster. With that, uh, there's only one more key to show you. And that is the... Um, Turn off your weapons key. I'm going to bring in an automatic because that's the one that I uh, can demonstrate this with best. Of course, I can turn weapons off of any unit, clicking the unit, pressing H, and the weapons are off. But I want to simulate an attack on this automatic. My automatic is going to be bound to the 4 key. With this, I can quickly select it. So let's say I was operating with the STRV. I'm operating in this area, and all of a sudden, a wild seed plane appears. Just pretend this is a seed plane for now. It's approaching my line. I'm seeing this thing. I'm going, oh crap, here comes a seed plane. 4 H. Weapons off. Since this is a radar guided unit, it can now no longer be targeted by the seed plane. So the seed plane turns around. I can then tell it to um, turn the weapons back on. And with that, I can make sure that I can engage the plane. Now one thing that I need to correct from the earlier part of this video, I don't use Q a lot. That is a mistake. I thought that Q was just attacking a single unit. Q is of course attack move, which means that a unit will attack anything that gets in the way, anything that it sees until the time of target. So if I press Q and left click there, it's going to move forward, attack anything that gets in the way, and then stop there. Instead, I want it to reverse into that bush, so shift G there. Now, there's no enemy targets here at this point, so it doesn't actually fire the gun. But what it will do is try to find targets. If they can be engaged, it will do that. But keep in mind that with move or with the um, attack marker like this, the uh, attack basic order, so Q, it is going to keep firing until everything in the vicinity is dead. Um, that might not be what you had in mind. It is also dangerous if you're putting, for example, IFVs versus tanks, because they're going to try to close all the way in before they can actually kill the tank. And some units cannot even fire at the uh, units that you might have had in mind in the first place. If I was to send a EOTS Hawk, so an AA unit in here, putting it on attack move, it can only engage air targets. If there's infantry in here, it can of course not engage that, so keep that in mind. With that, I believe I've covered all of the major buttons that I always use in a war game match. Um, as I mentioned, there are even some that I haven't used yet, but I will definitely start to use those. 
If you want to have a quick reminder of what keys do what, I've created a small document which you can print out. The link to that is in the description down below. Have it next to your keyboard the next time you're playing Wargame because it'll definitely help you. The more you master these keys, the more it's going to help you improve your game. Let me know if you have any questions about this guide or if you have any other guides that you would like me to make. I'm always happy to help, but I need your input. Otherwise, I might not even get the idea to make that guide. With that, it's the end of the video. Please hit like if you liked this video, if it was useful to you. And don't forget to share it with other people playing Wargame. They may not know about these hotkeys yet and they can definitely benefit. They'll thank you later. With that, I thank you for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.